Howdy y'all, it's Aaron here, and in this episode, I wanna show you the fastest way that you can grow your clothing store, the simple and easy way. So as always, make sure that you grab something to take notes with and stick around until the end where I'm gonna share with you why this strategy is one that most people fail to implement. All right, so number one is audience. And I'm gonna break these down over the course of this video, but everything is one, right? So there's gonna be five different items here, but I'm gonna break down, but each one of them is one, meaning that there's one audience. So if I had a dollar for every time I sat down with someone as they didn't have a clue who their audience was, then I would be able to buy, well, a whole lot of running shoes. I like to run. Side note, I do love running, but helping y'all grow your clothing store, you got to help me help you. So you have to seriously know who your audience is. Without understanding who you're talking to, the chances of you getting traction are very slim. So here's some ways to find out who your audience is. Go find brands who are similar to yours on Instagram, see who the top commenters are, and then start making a list of things that they post about. So let me show you what I mean over here on Instagram. All right, so when you make your way over to Instagram, go towards the most popular posts or find some of the most recent posts, does not matter. But for example, this one has 235 people who have liked it, but only five people have actually commented. I wanna know if they're legit, uh, meaning that they're like actually real people and not bots. Uh, but this person right here says, bring back the basics and all these colors, cool. So Andy Ruse, if I was gonna check him out, uh, would go to his profile, however, it's blocked, or it's a uh, private rather. So then I just go to this person, uh, Dean Fisher says, our wardrobes, it's open. Looks like he's obviously uh, wears some of the clothing that's going on here. But I can see real quickly, okay, what type of content are they posting? What type of things do they you know, care about? So this is maybe one person that I go back to eventually. So Dean Fisher, maybe I'll go look back at him. Maybe go find a different profile here. This one has four comments, thousands of views. Um, nothing really of note. Three comments on this one. Um, this Van Les in dress uh, private profile. Can't really see him, but he's been commenting on every single one of them. This girl, private. All right, Chris, commenting on a lot of these things. Again, let's see what he's posting about. Lifestyle photos, beach, games. And don't worry, this is not stalking. Um, it is research. <laughs> but in all seriousness, use your own discretion here, right? You, you want to tread lightly. Um, we want to know a few things about them, what they care about, what their aspirations are. Are they single? Are they married? How old they are? Um, just general range, right? You, you know, whether they're 50 or 60 versus 20 or 30. This is a starting point, but once you have the idea, start to create content that would resonate with them using your closing store as a focal point. So like, if I'm gonna use this brand, right? Or this, this person who is engaging with that brand, I would see that what's going on. Okay, look, there's a lot of photos of the beach. There's a lot of lifestyle photos of travel. There's a lot of uh, sporting games, uh, whether that's soccer or football, whatever that may be, but it's an active lifestyle. So just knowing this brand, and this is similar to the brand that I quote unquote have, then I would go and say, okay, well, the, they care about these types of things. So now I need to create content for this type of person. Each person that you do research on is going to be a little bit different. Your, your goal is to be able to find the similarities in those people. For example, if your products are sustainable and your audience is super keen on recycling in the environment, then you need to exploit that with your marketing. All right, guys, before we cover number two, I just wanted to say howdy. My name is Aaron. I'm one of the co-founders here at Bitbranding, and we're an e-commerce growth agency that specializes in helping clothing stores grow and scale profitably online. Now, make sure that you hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you don't miss out on any of the latest strategies for clothing stores. We drop new content for you guys every single week. All right, so number two is offer. How many of y'all like a great deal? Good. Yeah, me too. It's, it's human nature to want to deal no matter what is happening. Now, you need to understand that your customers, they do too, right? They're humans, they want a great deal. But before we go any further, let me clarify, this does not mean you have to give a discount. A discount does not have to be a deal. A great deal can be a total amount off after spending X amount of dollars, or it could be free shipping, or it could be a free gift. Depending on the brand and positioning in the marketplace, your deal may differ, but you do not have to do a discount. My point here is that it's gonna be harder and harder to acquire a customer without something that hooks them into your brand and pushes them to take action. So my suggestion would be to come up with five offers, run it by someone, get feedback, then choose two of those five and run with those. 
the offer is powerful because if you get everything else wrong, but the offer is great, potential customers are still likely to take action. Now, I wanted to show you a couple of examples of some offers that are going on right now, um, specifically through some ads. So you can do an ad that has an offer or you can have an offer that's on your website. For example, if we go to Tilly's right now, they have a 20, there we go, 20 off of $100, or I think they also have this other one that was scrolling across the top, up to an extra 50% off a clearance item. So they're trying to move product at this point, but it's an amazing offer and it's a huge piece right here where they're telling you to stock up for spring, use this code right now, this is what they're pushing, um, it's right there in your face. I'm sure if we went to go look at their ad, that's what they're pushing as well is, here's this amazing offer, um, and it really just makes me wanna say, okay, cool, I'm gonna take action right here, take $20 off of 100, and for Tilly's, I know that I can get quite a few pieces of product, quite a few clothing items uh, for spring, and I get a great deal, so awesome. Um, one thing that I did like about it for their website though is that there is an expiration date, right? So they have 12 hours left. Who knows how long this has been going on? Uh, maybe it's been for a weekend or whatever else, but it's 12 hours and 50 minutes and 46 seconds as we're going on here. Uh, by the time this video releases, I'm sorry, this spring is going to be uh, out of stock and or no longer available anyway for that offer. Um, another way that you can do this is go to the ads library. If you know you have a competitor in the marketplace, go and look at their ads. So you can go to the Facebook ads library um, it's just literally facebook.com forward slash ads slash library, whatever. Um, and then jump into here and you can actually see. So a lot of clothing stores or a lot of boutiques rather, um, they're going after the big people, right? So Red Dress or Pink Lily, they have almost always have a sale. They're strategic with their sale or with their quote unquote offer because it's off of sale items and they just have really engaging copy. So for example, this says, save up to 70% off of sales styles plus an extra 20% off with this code. So you're getting a huge discount, a huge offer. And now we don't know who they're targeting. They could be going after cold traffic, just trying to acquire customers at this point, but it's 70% off, it's a simple ad, and really the ad doesn't do anything. It's just a couple of flashing things that are going across the screen, but the offer is so good that likely people are gonna take action because even if they didn't want something, that great of a deal you don't necessarily pass up. All right, so number three is one platform. This goes without saying, but people need to be reminded more than they need to be told. You cannot be everywhere to everyone. Now, let me contradict my previous statement by saying that you actually can, but only after you've grown the business to a point where it makes sense. Oftentimes, this isn't until you're into the high six figures or more, right? You could literally grow it to a seven figure brand and just have, be on one platform. You need to focus on going a mile deep versus a mile wide, right? Let's go a mile deep on one area of your business and then expand over time. Find the platform that your audience is already on and the data is widely available out there. It's, it literally is everywhere. You can find out which age or demographic that somebody is actually on very easily. Now, if there are two platforms that come up for a tie for you guys, pick the one that you enjoy most. It's a heck of a lot easier for you to be consistent somewhere that you actually like spending time on. Hey y'all, before we jump into these two final big pieces to grow your clothing store fast, I wanted to tell you about our free masterclass training for clothing stores that will walk you through the five pillars that you must have in place for your online store to scale consistently and profitably no matter what is happening online. If you want access to this free training, check out the link in the description down below. All right, so number four is one year. This one is hard because everyone thinks that in one year is really hard. Everybody believes that one year is really long. Well, have a kid and then your mind will change how fast that goes. But seriously, but seriously, one year in business goes so fast that you'll need every bit of that year to dominate each category that we've talked about so far. The fastest growth and the best growth are sometimes mutually exclusive, but in this case, I don't think so. I believe you can grow fast over 12 months and reach your revenue goals, but if you don't stick with it, chances of meeting them or exceeding your goals will be very tough. I'm not saying it's impossible, it's just gonna be a lot harder. In business, it comes down to doing the really hard, unsexy work over and over and over again. The people who get bored and act on their shiny object syndrome typically lose potential. Trust me, I've seen it happen dozens of times and I've experienced it personally. All right, so the final piece here, and honestly, the most important part of any of these things that I've mentioned so far is the one message. So I'm reading a lot of Bernstein Bears books with my daughter right now, and one of them is called Telling the Truth. It has a phrase in the beginning that goes a little something like this. 
No matter how hard you want or how hard you try, you can't make the truth out of a lie. Now, you may not want to be lying to your audience, but what happens when you give someone mixed messages across your marketing is that they question which is actually more true. It's the reason that slogans and taglines work so well for people and businesses. I mean, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. If they, and I say they because you already know who that company is, decided to say 15 minutes could save you some money on your car insurance, we would begin to wonder if that 15% was a lie all of these years. And also just for fun, I know that everybody loves a Geico commercial, but like, as you can see here, they made a very boring industry into something fun. But at the end of the day, at the end of this commercial, all it gets down to is here's save 15%. It's this easy, save 15%, save 15%. It's a very consistent messaging. So no matter what it is, right? Even if you don't use Geico, which I think I did way back in the day in college, I did use Geico, but either you used them or you didn't. But the goal for Geico isn't that you necessarily use them. It's just that they become part of the conversation and you trust that brand because you've seen it for so long and they've reiterated their message over time. So your messaging may be one of the most important things that you do in your business. Every business must be known for something. The clothing store you're building must have a clear message that speaks to your target customer. Just like you watching this video, we can almost guess you have a clothing store because that is who we create content for. Craft a message you are proud of and continue to incorporate it in everything else that you create. All right, so now that you have the groundwork to grow your clothing store fast, you're going to need some technology and data to help you grow. That's why we suggest clothing store owners to check out Tripwell, the software that will alleviate, for the most part, your iOS 14 issues of tracking and give you all the metrics that you need in your business to make smart decisions. Make sure you check out the link in the description down below for that great deal on Tripwell. I know this was a lot to unpack. Make sure that you go implement this. I'm wishing you all nothing but success. And if you finished this video and loved what you saw, make sure you go check out this video next and we will see you guys in the next video.